the um, meeting of the Troy City Council of February 18th, um, 2009 is called to order. And um, Councilwoman Beltramini will provide us with an invocation and then we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. So please rise. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather here this evening to carry on the business of our city. I pray that you, by whatever name you are called, God, Allah, Yahweh, Father, I pray that you are in our midst tonight, guiding us with your wisdom. Grant us understanding and discernment as we try to make our decisions in the best interest of our community. We thank you for all that we are and all that we have. Be with us tonight, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilwoman Beltrini. And Mrs. Plata, may we have the roll call? Mayor Schilling. Here. Councilmember Beltramini. Here. Broomfield. Eisenbacher. Here. Fleming. Here. Howerlack. And Kerwin. Here. Quorum present. Um, we are expecting one member of council a little bit later. Uh, should we excuse the other member at this time? Mrs. Blum? Mayor, yes. you could do that just to make sure that it gets done, or if, if, if you wanted to wait and make sure uh, that the other member arrives, that would be also appropriate. Okay. All right. Thank you. Then we'll, we'll take care of it later. All right. Uh, sorry about the uh, change, but we found out at the last minute that we were going to have some uh, folks not be with us this evening. Um, as you know, um, we're here for our um, liquor violation hearings, and... Uh, under laws of the state of Michigan, um, we have the authority um, for action uh, where a liquor license has committed a violation of the liquor code or the local or state laws. So, Mrs. Bloom, would you like to begin? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, tonight we have Assistant City Attorney Susan Lancaster who has had an opportunity to speak with the uh, on these are all on-premises licenses that you have before you tonight. Um, so uh, these are ones where it's restaurants and things where you consume alcohol on the premises. And these are all violations that have occurred over the past year. Uh, Ms. Lancaster has talked with all of them. I do not believe that we will need to read the uh, public hearing procedure, which is highlighted in uh, the agenda booklet because I do believe that most of the public hearings will be waived. Okay, thank you. And Mrs. Lancaster, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Council members, good to see you again. Good to see you. Um, in fact, our first item on the agenda is item 101A, which is uh, Tent Restaurant Operations holds the license and they're doing business as Bailey's Pub and Grill. And um, they have indicated to me that no public hearing is necessary. They're not going to contest the fact that on October the 2nd, 1908, uh, Troy police sent in one of our decoys and without identification, no identification was requested and the minor was served, which is a violation of the Liquor Control Act. Um, I am here to answer any questions. However, Mr. John Carlin is representing the restaurant and is here to speak to council if you wish. Just to let council know, we do have our decoys in content from C if there's any request of any information from them. We like to keep them concealed from the camera so we can use them and also they are minors. Um, also our police officers are here. Mr. Uh, Sergeant Camlin is here if you have any questions. But uh, since there has been a stipulation to this, we'll ask Mr. Carlin if he wishes to address you, unless you have any questions okay. of me. Any questions, council? Good evening. Good evening. I'm sure you're all thrilled to be here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here representing uh, Tent, uh, doing business as uh, Bailey's, uh, 
to my left is, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Harry Decker. Harry Decker, who is the um, district manager for the restaurant operation. And then also uh, Mr. Stephen Filner, who is the GM, uh, general manager of the restaurant uh, here in Troy. Uh, we did acknowledge the violation when we held, held the hearing in front of the Liquor Commission right. um, and paid a fine at that time. The uh, company policy is that the employee be terminated. Uh, the employee was terminated immediately that night. And as a matter of fact, uh, when Mr. Decker took over, he uh, also let the general manager go because he found that the general manager had been lax in not keeping up the tips training program that they have instituted, in fact, nationally. Um, the requirement is that any employee within 30 days must be tips trained or they can no longer be employed. Uh, I think the evidence of that is that in 2007, they passed a couple of the Troy uh, liquor buys, and then they, in 2008, they passed three of those. Uh, uh, Mr. Decker was telling me uh, earlier tonight that the company has just instituted a new program, which is their own self-decoy operation. And uh, it's kind of an interesting program. I'll let him explain it a little bit. But what I like about it is they're using a 21-year-old to a 25-year-old. And they come in, and if they're uh, refused because they don't have an ID, then the employee is given an immediate cash reward on the spot. So uh, it's going to obviously make awareness of their responsibilities on a nightly basis. So, uh, Harry, do you want to explain what you've do, done uh, at the restaurant? Yeah, we, um, when I took the store over a year ago. Do you want to move the mic up a little bit there? I'm Thank sorry, you. When, when I took the store over a year ago, there were some issues with liquor service, um, over serving, and just not complying our, our, our people to what we need to do. And, and at this point, I'm reviewing nightly their, their four drink logs, what we're serving to people. And then within the next 30 days, we should have or will have our decoy system in place where we're rewarding people or terminating people based on, on whether they serve a minor or not. And, and we do take it seriously as a company. Um, and we will continue to get better in this store. This is a store that we need just from my year here that, that we have gotten better recently, but, but we did have a tough year in this store. Now, you, you're using 21 to 25 year olds mm -hmm. as, your, as your decoys, but you're, are they um, looking younger, looking older? No, they're you know, looking. What, what, uh, what type of uh, criteria are you using so that you can really test your employees? Well, they're just, 21 to 25, and our policy is anyone under 35 should be carded. So mm -hmm. if they come in and, and they're just going to order an, an alcoholic beverage, if the server cards them, they pass. If they don't card them, they, they don't pass. Even if they get carded at the door, they're still going in and trying to buy from a, a, a employee, and it's going to be immediate. They get a red card or a green card based on whether they passed or not, and we'll know within, I, I think, within, within minutes whether we, we failed to sting or not one of our stores. Uh, other questions from council at this time? Council, Councilwoman Kerwin? Just, just a comment, really. Um, we, Bailey's is a very popular place, mm -hmm. and it's very popular for young people. So I am pleased to learn that you are self-disciplining uh, before any violation takes place. Absolutely. It is good training, but it is a concern in the community that carding every time works. Right. Not only carding, but the, the amount of alcohol being served as well. We're mm -hmm. monitoring on a, on a nightly basis just to make sure that we're doing the right thing in, in this community. Thank you. Other questions from council? No? OK, thank you. Do you, you do have a question, council? No, oh, yeah. I'll do a resolution. <laughs> OK. All right, thank you. Is there anything else, Mrs. Lancaster, at this point? I'm not from the law. OK. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, we'll return then to um, Council for uh, Resolution, Councilman Eisenbacher. The resolution as presented with the exceptional last paragraph, and I'll read it. Now, therefore, be it resolved 
by the City Council of the City of Troy that after due notice, appropriate hearing and deliberations, and having made findings, it is recommended to the Liquor, to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission that Class C License Number 139298-2008 in the name of Tent Restaurant, op Tent Restaurant Operations in the City of Troy be renewed with the stipulation that all employees be TIPS or TAMS trained and that the licensee provide, provide proof of training to the Troy Police Department within 90 days and a certified copy of this resolution be sent to the Michigan Con Liquor Control Commission. Second. Moved by Councilman Eisenbacher, seconded by Councilman Beltramini that we approve the resolution uh, as printed and read. Discussion? Uh, Councilman Kerwin? Just a question for Council Billy. Um, is it preferred to say TIPS and or TAMS trained? Thank you. Okay. okay. That's what you said, right? Okay. Because in the agenda it says and, and you're probably wondering why we would request it for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, vote, Ms. Plata? Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. And Kerwin? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, the next one is Alibi Lounge. And this is Lancaster. Yes, again, uh, <coughs> Madam uh, Mayor and Council Members, uh, this particular uh, entity, it's, which is known as Alibi Lounge of Troy, is the license holder doing business as Alibi Lounge and Restaurant, is waiving a public hearing and not contesting the fact that on December the 30th of last year, our police sent in a decoy without identification and the server did not request identification of any kind and served liquor, which is a violation. And it is my understanding that Steve Wood, Woods is here on behalf of Alibi Lounge. And unless this board has any questions for me right now, he would like to speak to council. Okay. Council, have questions on this item for Mrs. Lancaster? Yeah. Steve Wood, present. I do see the owners are here too, both of them. Yes, they are. Yes. Bloom Charters. And I'm sure. It's Steve and Wood, please. They don't want to be here, I know. No. Long time restaurant. No, yes. No, um, we just came in to say that it did happen on, the, on December 30th. It was our fourth time this that year being presented with a, a sting operation the first time we were unfortunately caught. Um, we have done it for years without be, going years with, without many violations. Um, all of our servers, including the server that served that night, is, is TIP certified. He is no longer with us as part of our company policy to uh, let go of servers or anybody who serves a minor for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. I don't want to say right now. I forgot. Uh, we have been there for a long time. Again, he was let go. It is in our company policy and in our manuals that they do not serve anybody under the age, looks, or under, card everybody under the age looks 40. Um, and unfortunately, it did happen. Or 60s in the 40 now, you know, so. Well. <laughs> they have that thing about age 40. now, so. Okay, yes, 40 is very sufficient, yes. Um, Council, do you have questions at this time about this? Mayor. Uh, I do know that they tried to be real strict about this over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but we, we like to see no violations at all, especially. So uh, with restaurants that have been kind of the staple of our community over the years and set an example for other restaurants. So, yes. Uh, um, Councilman Eisenbacher? Um, are you, have you instituted any programs other than the TIPS program to uh, incentivize the catching of the uh, underage people? Do you have any decoy program planned? I uh, don't at this present time. Um, I'm just concerned because this is the uh, the fifth violation since 1989. Um, I know it's a long period of time, but I'm sorry, I'm only aware of three. But okay. Um, I'd like to see some sort of method besides the tips and tams training to make sure that 
that the, uh, the employees are more cognizant of this issue? We do have meetings. Uh, we did have a meeting that week, being that it is a holiday weekend, we did have a full meeting about that, about carting everybody that came in. Um, and beyond that, I can't tell you how it happened. I just know that it did. I wasn't the one. I was on duty that evening. Okay. And uh, all of the uh, employees are aware that because this happened, that person was let go. Yes, it that, is also in our employee manual, manual that if you do serve and you don't hurt people under 40, that you will be terminated. Okay. Other, other questions, Council? Councilman Fleming? I think what Councilman Eisenbach was referring to, we know that several establishments have established their own decor program, just like the previous one. The babies. Mm -hmm. Would you consider that? Is that something you would consider? Absolutely. As, as a step in yes. direction? I think it's an excellent program to have your own in-house team because we know when we come in with, with our decoys, the police come with their decoys, that's random. And if it happens once with a decoy, odds are it's happening more than once. And you're just not, it's happening and there's, you know, no one's reporting it because the person's wanting to buy it, like there's not a stink. But if you do your own decoy, I think that that might be a step in the right direction for you. That would be my only suggestion. Okay. That's something we can certainly uh, look into and try to implement. Okay. Um, actually, it's um, a program that is not um, that expensive to implement, you know, with people that you uh, can have come in. And, and uh, it is an extra uh, way of checking and training on people. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Anything else? No? Thank you. Thank Mrs. You. Lancaster, is there anything else? <coughs> okay, thank you. Um, do we have a resolution then on this? Is it going to be the, the similar um, resolution? Um, somebody else want to do one? I'll move. Okay, Councilman Fleming? I'll move the resolution then. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the City Council of the City of Troy that after due notice, appropriate hearing and deliberations, and having made findings, it is recommended to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission that Class C license number 858-2008-SS in the name of Alibi Lounge of Troy Incorporated in the City of Troy be renewed with the stipulation that all employees be TIPS or TAMS trained and the licensee provide proof of training to Troy Police Department within 90 days and a certified copy of this resolution be sent to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. Second. Moved by Councilman Fleming, seconded by Councilwoman Bill Termini, that we approve the resolution as printed and read. Um, discussion? Was it, was it tips? Tips or, or TAMS. TAMS. Yes. Tips or. Okay. Yes. Thank you. We've changed that on all of them. Okay, Mrs. Plata, the vote? Councilmember Bell Termini? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. And Mayor Schilling? Yes. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is license issue to GBD Inc. <coughs> doing business as Franco Cafe. Again, uh, in line with the others, this particular uh, uh, licensee is waiving a public hearing, not contesting the fact that on December the 30th of last year, um, at Franco Cafe, our police department sent in a decoy without identification, and no identification or date of birth was requested. Um, it's my understanding that one of the owners is here tonight. I believe her name is Anna Giolando, and I think she wishes to speak to council. I'm here if council has any questions for me. Okay. Council have any questions for Mrs. Lancaster? No? All right. Thank you. The folks here from Franco Cafe? Yes, yeah, I think you were the first ones here. Second. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm sorry I would apologize for what happened to the city, to the council, to the community. It should happen. And I'm very sad about it. You want to move the mic down just a little sure. bit? It's hard for, yeah, thank you. So we've been having, uh, we've been almost for the establishment about 20 years. Mm -hmm. We're at least here with the model. 
We never had the, it was a small bar, and now we have a full bar. We've been having a little problems because I'm not smoking. We've been looking for bartenders, and they didn't want to get a job. So now we have a new employees, and um, I have, see, I don't, no one, none of my waste staff is allowed to, to go in a bar, give a drink, they have to ask, they got people under 40. We have um, the restaurant with the tables numbers and the things, so we know if something happened, they are drunk, I make sure we don't serve. Unfortunately, my, wait, my waiter serve a minor, and I'm very sorry about that. It shouldn't happen, because they're not allowed to go in a bar not to serve. And uh, I went uh, in the kitchen to get uh, some supply, and I come in in the front for after four or five minutes, and uh, I found out they serve minors. And I go out, this happened, and um, he say he asked uh, if I hold it was. And I go, where? Before or after? After serving, it doesn't, you know, it, where you accomplish nothing. So I told them it can no longer work. We have a new employee now. We got the, the tips, classes. I'm going to go to get involved with, um, with the police to have the classes. And I'm making sure this will never happen again. Uh, I it, apologize. You did indicate that the person is no longer employed no with longer. you? No longer. You have a different And employee. mostly we have a new now employee. They have a classes. I have a two bartenders. They took a classes. And they are professional bartenders, so it will never happen. Besides them and me, no one will be around the bar. Okay. Um, it's a new for us, so I'm sorry. Yes. Well. Um, but again, even though it's it's new, it's it's a serious kind of uh, situation. Oh, yeah, We're very yeah. serious about it here in Troy, as you can, as can tell. Uh, Council, do you have questions at this point? Yes, Council Bell to me. Mrs. Giamundo? Yes. Did you say that you have gotten the information or that you plan to have everyone TIPS trained? I already got it. And have, you, have the employees been TRIPS, TIPS trained? Yes, we waited for the result this week. Okay, so they were just recently trained? Yes. All of them? All of them, except the bartender because she already has the glasses. She had everything. Okay. She's. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No? Thank you, ma'am. Almost said? Yes, Here's thank you. Council, do you uh, want to do the uh, the same resolution? <coughs> we have a yes. change. Uh, yes, uh, Councilman Eisenbacher. Yeah, there. In the paragraph of now, though, for be it resolved, we'll have it be renewed with the stipulation that all employees be TIPS or TAMS trained, and that the licensee provide proof of training to the Troy Police Department within 90 days. And it's continued. And so their training that they have just had will count? No. Yes. Not, it won't that, count after this resolution if you yeah. say that, they will be. Yes. <laughs> that, that's be, why I'm inquiring. It does inquiring. not say will be. Be tips or TAM trained, which is present tense, and that the licensee provide proof of training within 90 days. So the proof of training has to happen within the 90 days, but they just have to be trained, not will. I'm going to inquire about that, okay? Uh, Mrs. Blum? Uh, if they just had recent training within the, what, the past two months? Same day. This February 13th. February 13th? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Blum? Uh, Mayor, just to make sure that everyone is on the same page and that there is no ambiguity with that, you may wish to amend your resolution to say uh, be renewed, as I understand council desires to have. Uh, happen and also that proof of the tips, yeah. the recent tips and or the recent tips training be provided 
uh, to the Troy Police Department within 90 days and a certified copy be sent to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. Okay. Because it's a different matter if it's been a while since they've had their training, if they just had it within, you know, February 13th. It, it's just reversing those clauses. It seems redundant. To okay, there's no second. <laughs> Take care of this uh, I think there is no second. I didn't hear. Do you going to? to I'll withdraw. Okay. Okay. You want to do a new resolution then? We're rewording the resolution in the uh, agenda for in this case because they just had uh, their training on February 13th. I have a question while we're mulling. All right. While they're working on the resolution, Councilwoman Kerwin, uh, is it for Mrs. Boom? I was interested uh, when we were hearing testimony regarding the bartender. Uh, because this one says all employees. Right. Maybe Mrs. Lancaster would like to clarify. Uh, actually, Mayor, I can probably oh, clarify okay. on right. this one. Um, certainly you do, if there, um, if there are persons who serve alcohol, um, then it's my understanding that you intend that to apply to persons who are serving alcohol. Uh, is the question uh, that it says all employees as yes. opposed to all those employees serving alcohol? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you certainly could amend your resolution to say that it's all employees serving alcohol. I know that in the past, it's gone both ways because there are bus persons and things that have yes. uh, okay. committed the violation. So mm -hmm. council has in the past gone e either way on okay. that. So you have the discretion to make the res resolution your own. Okay, thank you. Councilman Eisbacher, you okay. wanna read the paragraph now with the changes? Yes. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of Troy that after due notice, appropriate hearing and deliberations and having made findings, it is recommended to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission that Class C license number 16886-2008-SS in the name of GMD, GDA, wait, GBD Incorporated in the city of Troy be renewed with the stipulation that the licensee provide proof of recent tips or trams training of all employees to the Troy Police Department within 90 days and a certified copy of this resolution be sent to the Mich Michigan Liquor Control Commission. Do we have a second? Might it say all employees who serve alcohol? No, okay. All employees. Okay. Which uh, I think that years ago uh, we changed it to all employees because we found that it just seemed to cover okay. everything. Uh, it made for a better situation in case there was someone else that served. Second. Okay. Moved by Councilman Eisenbacher, seconded by Councilman Beltramini that we approve the resolution as read. Discussion? The vote then, Mrs. Pilata? Councilmember Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Torlak? Oh, I'm sorry. Kerwin? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. And Councilmember Beltrami? Yes. Motion passed. And Ms. Lancaster on the next. This is a rather unusual one, Mayor. This is the uh, next one is uh, 101D. Right. It's the uh, name of the licensee is Priya Enterprises Inc., Priya Restaurant, and they, in fact, were the violator of the law. However, since that violation uh, occurred, um, the license was sold, so uh, the new licensee really doesn't have to stipulate to public hearing because there was no violation. And there have, I believe, someone is here from the new license holder to address the city council. We have been presented with the bill of sale and assignment and the transfer of the license as of January 28th of 09. So, um, the old Prius is no longer here. Is there somebody from uh, Prius here? 
They're, they're here behind you, yes. So uh, there's really, there was a violation, but it was under the old license. I under the old license, but weren't some of the same people involved under the old license that are under the new license, but not the actual owners? Perhaps um, they'll explain that. I that. can't answer. I think the, uh, I think there's an attorney here tonight. All right. Maybe Thank you. Can help you out. Thank you. Any questions for staff before we? Okay. Yes. Would you like to come forward and give us your name, please? Maybe you could clarify that for us. No problem. Good evening, okay. Mayor, Council Members. My name is Lisa Hamame. I'm from Adkiss and Need in Allen. Standing to my right is Ravi Mandava. Ravi is the current shareholder of Damamagia Incorporated, which is the new licensee for this property. He is the sole shareholder. In October of 2008, when this violation happened, he was not a shareholder, owner, or even an employee of uh, Priya. Just so that you know, Ravi also is a sole shareholder and runs Pre on Farmington Hills, has been the sole shareholder to, since 2002 and has never had a violation. Despite the fact that he was not violated and in, in, was called here today, he decided to come and hire us to come out here to talk to you so that he can meet all the council members, explain to you that he is putting implementing procedures in place today to ensure all his employees are TIPS trained. And if you want him to present that to uh, the police department also, he's willing to do that. And do you uh, have the information on what happened to the employee that did sell under the old license? We do not have the information. But what I do understand, and this is just from what I'm understanding has happened, is that the previous owner acknowledged with the Liquor Control Commission a violation and, was, and paid a fine. Mm -hmm. As far as who served, we don't know. I apologize. OK. Uh, well, we have the information because we have the ticket, you know. Um, so we'll, we'll clarify that. Uh, Mrs. Lancaster, do you want to indicate? Yes, and then he uh, could say if that person is, I'm interested whether that person is still employed there. Your Honor, I'm not sure if he's still employed. If, if I knew the name, he would be able to, Mr. Mondavi can tell us whether he's still employed. I don't know who the violator is. I do know that someone did appear in court on the ticket. But the responsible was charged with the $100 fine. The state of Michigan also uh, uh, issued a fine for $100 to the penalty of restaurant. Um, unfortunately, we do not believe it was the end. It says, do you have it? It's Mr. Hussain. Mr. Abdul, Abdul Cordier Hussain. Is he a member? Uh, is he still employed with you? Yeah, from since last week, he was. That person was not, that I'm not sorry, a, you have to speak in the mic. Oh. No, that's not a microphone, sir. Thank you. Okay. I know everybody thinks that's one. <laughs> I think this person is still there. Um, we'll make sure he's terminated. He was. He's still there. He's still there, but if you're requesting that he terminate it, Mr. Mondavi's indicated that he will terminate him, but. The, uh, the other folks have had it as a policy that if someone serves that they that they terminate that person um i think that uh we didn't know who the person was yes. until today they, you weren't yes. provided it because you weren't the the, the licensee yes. is he a waiter yes. what yes. is his position then he is yes, a waiter sir. he's a waiter no uh, all right uh councilman eisenbacher how many employees do you have uh right now uh, five Okay. Is it in the still in the same location yeah. on Maple Road? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Councilman Kerwin. Good evening. Good evening. It's a small restaurant. Yes. Um, and a full bar. No. Well, in uh, I eat there. Um, uh, it's a serving bar. Okay. Yeah. I imagine now that you're taking it over, you might look at that. It's small enough where everyone, even I, could be carded. In fact, it would be a compliment <laughs> if someone would card me. Uh, I, I would think that that, as a matter of practice, would make sense. Because the fines, in comparison to whatever you can make off serving drinks, is astronomical. The multitude of fines that can, that can come up. Now, a question on the names that you see before you or have been shown you. Are, are you these family members? 
No, he's not. Okay. Um, there, in general, in Troy, even in a small establishment, when someone violates this rule, the termination is immediate. So to be proactive about it, that really needs to be stressed from that moment. You will never be in violation if everyone is carded every single time. It's really a simple way to do it. Okay. And I'd, in, I'd encourage you to uh, incorporate that going forward. Further questions from council? <coughs> At this point, of the owners or their attorney? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council, this is uh, back before us. So it's a different situation than some of our others. So I don't know if you want to handle it the same or handle it differently. Well, we Does the attorney have any advice? Pardon? I have a question. Uh, yes, Mrs. Bloom? I would be happy to answer your question first of all, and then I. Well, is the license number and the name of the business properly corresponding? Um, actually, Mayor, because it is a new licensee, you certainly, as with any on-premises license, you certainly do have the ability to recommend non-renewal or renewal, uh, but this is a new license holder. I, I don't, this is not, uh, the, the violation did not occur under the, the entity that is the new owner. So no, this res this proposed resolution, which is in packet, does not accurately reflect the person who it has been sold to. I understand is we can't take action then because we really have no jurisdiction um, over this party. It, 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 he has indicated that he is willing to uh, have his employees trained. He's also willing to uh, terminate that certainly could be reflected in the minutes of the meeting mm -hmm. um, in, in addition um, just as we've done with all of them we've kind of expedited all of these hearings and if I may just make a statement just to say that we are asking for <coughs> all of the information that was provided in the agenda packet to be incorporated into the record again we've not gone into it before these hearings but with this one especially because there's no one here to admit that the violation did occur yeah, and my, my concern is that the even though it's a new owner, it's the same restaurant, it's, that it's a, uh, a different, uh, and it's the same employee that did the selling. And so I just want to make sure that that's taken care of so that with the new owner, there aren't more problems. Mrs. Lancaster? Um, Madam Mayor, um, we do want to point out to City Council, we did some checking, and because this is a new licensee, the Michigan State law requires that this gentleman get all his employees trained by Tips and Tam within 180 days. If he does not, there is a, that's considered a violation, <clears throat> which is actionable by the Liquor Control Commission. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he, he will be required to get Tips and Tam training even without a resolution. Mm. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? Uh, Wait, Council of Baltimore, you have a question? Well, I was searching last year's liquor violations to see if we had the person who sold then because if it's the same if it's the same employee then it is it is a problem. It's the same employee? I'm looking. We don't know. You're no, I, I don't believe it is. It is not. It is not. Okay. It is a relative. Okay. All right, um, then are we ready to go to the next one? Okay. Uh, you understand, sir? Oh. Ma'am, does your client uh, understand? I will explain. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next one on the agenda is Cafe Sushi, holds the license doing business as Cafe Sushi. Again, um, there's been a waiver of the public hearing. There's been a stipulation that they will not contest the violation that was issued. Uh, on in this particular case, October the 2nd of last year, when our police department sent in a decoy without identification and no one asked for identification or date of birth. There is someone from Cafe Sushi here. I believe his name is Mako Yumazaka. I'm sure he will introduce himself to you. He wishes to speak to council, and if the council has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Yes, it's, uh, is it Mako? Uh, yeah, the name is Mako Yamakura. Yes, yes. I see it here. We yes. Have it here. Thank you. Yes, you can move the mic. That's good. Okay. Um, it was um, technically of October 2nd, I believe, one of our employees uh, was hit with the decoy and she had served a beer to the, uh, the decoy. A uh, perfect storm of bad timing and situation that we've had at the restaurant. Um, we were just busy prior and I had just sat down in the office to finish up some extra paperwork and since I am a manager of the restaurant, I was there at the time, I failed in my responsibility to um, double check is what I normally do. Um, we've, we've had one prior violation in 2005 and uh, I think pretty much the same thing happened. We had uh, since implemented um, tips, I mean, not, not tips, TAM training since uh, 2005. We have a record with the city of Troy, uh, with the police department, with all of our employees being uh, TAM certified. And um, since then, I, I've been trying to employ like a direct supervisory role every time we go to business at night. Since we are a small restaurant, technically, with employees and staff, I have to make sure that everybody's around and doing everything that they do. And the servers themselves are now, um, since they've all worked for me since I think about 2001, 2002, they're, um, you know, they're basically uh, watching each other. Because um, with, the, with the decoy program we've gone through, and I think about 28 now uh, decoy operations since we've opened. And, you know, this is our second violation. So I'm a little personally upset that we can't not get everybody through the Is Ms. Scan still employed? Uh, no, she has been terminated. Um, she's in Minnesota now, so happy, but sad that she had to do this. Okay, thank you. Uh, other questions? You understand that we'll require the <coughs> training again? Yes, yes, we are, yeah, we are okay. currently underway getting everything back together. Okay. And, uh, and that we we're actually going to institute our own personal training program um, with uh, ideas from other restaurants. Um, I'm in contact with the uh, at Total Entertainment. They have the uh, the decoy operation that they were talking about, um, and we're right next door to them. And I'm, I've got pretty good relations with them, so we're going to talk with them about instituting a retraining at their location. That way, we can kind of draw off of their restaurant and kind of you know do what we can as an additional safety measure to basically make sure we just card everybody. Okay. Thank you. Further questions? Mrs. Lancaster? Would that training they're talking about qualify as um, equivalent to tips and TAMs? Um, no, I'm not familiar with that training. We, of course, it's additional. You're doing that in addition to Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing okay. the whole full board since the All last right. violation. Of the Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You want to do a resolution, Councilman Beltramini? Sure. Um, the resolution with the last, as printed with the last paragraph reading, now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Troy that after the notice, appropriate hearing and deliberations and having made findings, it is recommended to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission that Class C license 107549-2008 SS in the name of Cafe Sushi LLC in the City of Troy be renewed with the stipulation that all employees be TIPS or TAMS trained and that the licensee provide proof of training to the Troy Police Department within 90 days and a certified copy of this resolution be sent to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. Second. Moved by Councilwoman Beltramini, seconded by Councilman Eisenbacher that we approve the resolution as printed with uh, the last paragraph as read. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Plata? Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. And Eisenbacher? Yes. <coughs> Motion passes. Next is uh, uh, Embassy Suites, Hospitality Ventures. That's correct, Hospitality Ventures uh, Management LLC, RBNJ Troy LLC, doing business as Troy Embassy Suites. Again, uh, there is a waiver of public hearing, uh, stipulation that on October the 9th of 08, um, the police department sent in a decoy to Embassy Suites 
uh, without identification. Um, no identification was requested or date of birth, and the uh, uh, licensee is stipulated to that fact. Uh, John Carlin is representing the Embassy Suites and is here tonight to address Council. If Council has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, I have a question before Mr. Carlin comes up. You said RB. It's like RB and J Troy. And, and here it says HV. RBHV. HV in our uh, and I wanted to clarify so we'd have it correct for the right. Is in Victor. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm John Carter on behalf of the uh, licensee. My left is Jim Miskelin, who's the general manager of the hotel. Uh, as far as we're able to determine, this may be the first violation ever at the hotel. Um, the service there is so limited; it's mostly to hotel guests and. It's rare that somebody comes in in a situation like this. Uh, they have passed several decoy operations, uh, you know, in the recent future, or in the recent past. So uh, we will get everybody tips uh, trained uh, within the 90-day period. I think most of them are already trained now. Yeah. Uh, but we'll be sure that they all are uh, within the last 90 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm looking at the record here to see if you had any others. Only since, only since December of uh, 2007. That was a, a transfer. That was a well, transfer. The hotel's been operated by them for quite some time. Right. Our history. They keep changing over. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, questions? Council? Mr. Miskell is here if you have any questions. Okay. And uh, what about the employee? Employee is still employed with, with us. It's a 20 plus year employee. It was kind of an extenuating uh, circumstances. The hotel at the time of this um, decoy operation was under an $8 million renovation. So we had any, at any given time 70 some suites. We were operating with a very minimal staff, obviously, and it was a temporary bar setup. And this person that was working the bar was actually the banquet captain of the hotel at the time was pulled off the floor immediately after the violation and was not let behind the bar until she was re-tipped certified. And normally her position wouldn't be behind the bar anyways, but because we were so short-staffed at that period of time, we were down to the highest seniority people. So this person is still employed in the, in the, in the capacity of banquet captain and has been recertified in tips. What is your uh policy though if it were to happen moving then, forward yes she'd be immediately terminated and it's in documentation and basically uh, uh, documentation has already been placed in her file she was given a, what we call a written warning notice if she receives any more and as a matter of fact we've changed the policy and from now moving forward they'll be terminated immediately. Okay. what would have happened if you hadn't been going through the renovation had your usual uh, procedures going what would have happened to her I would have if she she wouldn't have been a bartender so I mean normally it was our policy and has been our policy that you tip every I mean you, you yes. ask everybody right and um, like I said we've since re amended the policy since this violation since it's, from what I understand from John it's the only violation I think the hotels ever had and that, like I said it was kind of a different circumstance at that period of time she was in a position where normally she wouldn't be we we're operating basically off the banquet bar at the time because of Two bars that are in the hotel were on a major renovation. Okay. So. Let's see if the council has any other questions. Do you have questions for them? I have one. Councilman Eisbacher? Um, the one thing I saw in the, the notes from the decoy is that she was asked for her room card instead of her identification. That's correct. Um, do you typically interlink the room card with the age of the person? Not typically. Okay. Typ she was in, in the mode. We have manager's cocktail reception comes along with your, your suite. Mm -hmm. two, two hours free manager's cocktail reception every evening. We were in manager's cocktail reception. So that's a situation where normally, in normal circumstances, it's set off in, a, in, in the area of the hotel that's above the right. atrium. And it's kind of in a controlled area. We were operating temporarily during the manager's reception. They have to show us this card that allows only so many drinks mm -hmm. when they check in. They also have to show it to get the complimentary cooked order breakfast in the morning. She was in, we were not in, we were in construction mode and her head was in construction mode rather than asking for the ID, which she would have asked and saw the vertical license. So. Okay. I get, with my day job, I get to travel quite a bit and I've always been 
shocked at the somewhat the looseness of alcohol at restaurants during the manager's hours. Do you have a process whereby you don't serve to minors during that um, a manager's event? Yes. Okay. Same the same operation that applies to our full service bar on the first level. Okay. They have so the, the ID. It's okay. A totally you separate ID. bar. You do check ID during the manager's yes, event. Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely. That wasn't clear in your original comment to us. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. They absolutely check because they passed a couple of buys. So. We've passed at least one since, so. Yeah, I don't think we ever have our uh, our decoys stay in the hotel as a, a decoy. I don't know if they're old enough to rent a room. You have to be 18. Okay. So. Okay, any other questions? Any questions for Mr. Carlin? Okay, thank you. <coughs> Council, are you ready for a resolution? Yes, I, I Councilman Kerwin, did you have a question or you want to do the resolution? No, I have a question on it. Okay, again, go um, ahead. With the stipulation that all employees, again, is this going to reflect for the hotel itself? I just wonder if that's advisable or if it would go for all employees that are involved in food service. Food all food beverage employees. service, yeah. There's a lot of others that obviously aren't involved in anything like that. Yeah. And we don't have any problem with that. Good catch. <coughs> okay. Do you want to do that resolution with that inserted? Well, uh, with advice uh, from the attorney who served food and beverage, is that? Uh, that, that would certainly be appropriate. This is a little uh, distinct from some of the other restaurants uh, in that there are a lot of hotel employees that will have no involvement in the sale of food. Is that or beverage? Is your suggestion then food and beverage? Uh, food and beverage sale would certainly cover Thank you. Uh, you know, all service. the employees who would have access to that. Thank you. Okay, um, Councilman Kerwin. Yes, uh, the resolution uh, with the changes in the in the last paragraph. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Troy that after due notice, appropriate hearing and deliberations and having made findings, it is recommended to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission that B Hotel License Number 75063-2007SS in the name of Hospitality Ventures Management Incorporated RBHV Troy LLC in the City of Troy be renewed with the stipulation that all employees who serve food and beverage be TIPS or TAMS trained and that the licensee provide proof of training to the Troy Police Department within 90 days and a certified copy of this resolution be sent to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. Do we have a second? Support. Moved by Councilman Kerwin, seconded by uh, Councilman Eisenbacher that we approve the resolution. Madam uh, Mayor? Yes, uh, as printed and read with the changes. Yes, Councilman Beltman. Did. Ms. Kerwin say all employees who serve food and beverage? Yes. There may be employees that serve beverage and not food, and under this stipulation, they would not be required to be TIPS or TAMS trained. Well, food I'll, I'll or go beverage. With the advice of the attorney. Do you think it should say, it says food and beverage service, involved with food and beverage service? I think that that uh, is both food service and also beverage service. I mean, the, I think it's understood that it, and certainly you can amend it if you want to be, um, if, if council would like to do that, but I think the generally understood. Um, I would move to beverage. amend. I would move to amend and use the wording that the attorney used. All employees involved in food and beverage sales be tips uh, or TAMS training. They're not selling it. Not. Service. Well, I wrote service, service but she yeah. said sales. So you want food and beverage service? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All employees involved in food and beverage or. service or beverage service. Food and beverage service is at least a department. Support. Moved by Councilman Beltramini and seconded by Councilman Eisenbacher that we mm -hmm. amend uh, to indicate that it be uh, all employees involved in food or, or beverage, beverage service. service. Discussion of the amendment? The vote, Mrs. Plata, on the amendment? Councilmember Kerwin? Oh, uh, yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. And Fleming? Yes. 
And it passes on the main motion, Mrs. Plata. Or is there any discussion? Okay, Mrs. Plata on the main motion. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. And Kerwin? Yes. Motion passes. And we go on to uh, C.J. Mahoney's, Mrs. Lancaster. All this up and down, is that being hard on your leg or your knees? <coughs> well, I apologize. I, I was shoveling snow about a month ago and I pinched a nerve. And oh. I'm, if I look like I'm a little, it's because of that. So I, I should have explained that ahead of time. But I'm doing fine. Okay. Thank you for Thank asking. You. Um, this is a licensee of name of C.J. Mahoney of Troy, LLC, doing business as J.C. Mahoney's of Troy. And again, uh, Council, we have had a waiver of a public hearing and a stipulation to the fact that on October 2nd of last year, our police sent in a decoy uh, with no identification, and the decoy was not asked for any identification or date of birth. It's my understanding that Tom Everson is here for C.J. Mahoney's to speak to Council tonight. If council has any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Okay, questions? Uh, Mr. Everson, you're the manager of the business? I'm the owner. I'm the owner. Good evening, Thank Council you. and Mayor. It says manager here. Yes. Good evening. I'm Do you have sorry? anything more that you want to add to what happened? Uh, and what I'm, happened to the employee? And, and the night when we served, there's no excuse. We had an employee that served a minor. The employee was. Uh, Fired on the spot. All of our employees that work with alcohol and, and food are tips trained. Mm -hmm. We do have a in-house uh, where, where we try to catch them, our employees to see if they serve anybody. We use decoys that are over 21, and we do offer a cash reward when, when an employee does not serve somebody that we send in. There's no excuse for it. We're brand new in the city. Right. Not not a way to start out. <coughs> okay, Councilman Eisenbacher. How often do you run your decoy program? We we just started it actually after the first of the year, and we've run it twice. Okay, for the questions here. I, I do. Um, Councilwoman Kerwin. Um, you know the values of this community in terms of this. This is a community that really absolutely. Has, okay, all right. Absolutely. Okay. So it's a here. relatively short liquor Six license months. time to have such a violation. And I know if, if you feel it as much as we do, that you'll see to it that it doesn't happen again. Well, there's absolutely no excuse for what happened. And we've taken all the steps. That we, we have our employees, anybody that looks like they're 40 years old or, or younger, we ask for their ID. We have door people that, that ID everybody coming to the door on busy nights. Our hostess has even re requested where we, we ask ID. We don't serve anybody over 21 at, late in the evening. We don't allow them in the, unless they're accompanied by a, a, a parent. So we're taking all the steps that we feel that we, we can to make sure that this doesn't happen. <clears throat> but that's not an excuse, so we apologize. Uh, Councilman Fleming, you have a question? I appreciate the fact that you have a decoy program and you said you, you've done that twice this year. What's your policy in your your decoy if if they pass you know they didn't serve the alcohol what do you do and if they fail what do you do if they fail we write them out okay we, if they fail twice they're going to be fired uh if they don't fail if they, they they pass it then they get a cash reward um is that a written policy or yes something? yes it's posted in the in the restaurant it's actually posted where all the servers are so they're all very aware of it and they they look for the cash reward. Thank you. Any other questions? Mayor. Councilman Eisbacher? <clears throat> My one concern is that this was your first compliance test and you failed it. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, we've had it where the first day they're open, they do a compliance test and they fail. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were open for four months, <coughs> four months to the day. I or no, no, I'm sorry, it was less than that. We approved the license in June of 2008. You had your failure on October 2nd of 2008. We opened on September 7th and we, we failed it the following month. Yeah. Okay, so it was one month. Um, if, 
you're back here again next year, it's going to be... I'm not going to be back here next year. <laughs> okay, good. That's what I want to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Everson? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council, will you come and move a resolution? Councilman Fleming? Yes. I move the resolution to read the last paragraph. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Troy that after due notice, appropriate hearing and deliberations, and having made findings, it is recommended to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission that Class C Resort License Number 169707-2008-SDM in the name of Cameron Mitchell Restaurants, LLC. Oh, oh no, I see Jay Little. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm moving ahead, jumping way ahead. Get back up here. <clears throat> that Class C license number 173579-2008-SS in the name of C.J. Mahoney's of Troy LLC in the city of Troy be renewed with the stipulation that all employees be TIPS or TAMS trained and that the licensee provide proof of training to the Troy Police Department within 90 days and a certified copy of this resolution be sent to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. Support. Moved by Councilman Fleming, seconded by Councilman Eisenbach, that we approve the resolution as printed and the last paragraph read. Um, discussion? Vote, Mrs. Plata? Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. <coughs> Motion passes. And uh, Mrs. Lancaster, Cameron Mitchell Restaurants, uh, LLC, Ocean Prime? Uh, again, your uh, mayor and council, um, the uh, licensee has uh, waived a public hearing and uh, has stipulated to the fact that on December 30th of 08, our police department sent in a decoy uh, without identification Twice. who was served uh, liquor without being asked for identification. Again, Mr. Uh, John Carlin represents Ocean Prime. If the council has any questions of me, I'd be happy to answer and Mr. Carlin would like to address you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Carlin? Thank you, uh, members of council. To my left is Mark Weiss. Right. Mark is the general manager of the, actually he's a regional manager of uh, Cameron Mitchell Restaurants, uh, LLC. Um, the, this violation should never have occurred. It was a situation where a young lady asked a uh, busboy for a drink, and the busboy told the waitress, and Waitress then brought the drink, not thinking to check, and left it there and, and walked away. Um, the uh, all of the employees were tips trained, unfortunately. This, including this one, I believe, right? And uh, because, as you know, this restaurant just opened, and it was a requirement of the state, so we had everybody trained. Um, and I know that it looks bad, although I think they did get one pass by. He passed on October 2nd. Yeah, October 2nd. Right. Uh, and then the violation occurred on December 30th. Um, but what I, what I wanted to bring out was that uh, Mark was the regional manager for Cameron Mitchell Restaurants. And it had, during uh, a long period of time here in Michigan, had five restaurants. As you know, Mitchell's Fish Market, uh, they had four of those. And then they had uh, Cameron Steakhouse in downtown Birmingham. They're all very busy places. They're all. Uh, nice restaurants and uh, Mark is proud to say that there was never a violation at those restaurants in all those years. So obviously they know what they're doing. Uh, they sold those five restaurants and uh, they now have this one still in Troy. So um, we're willing to get them retrained even though they've been trained once again. Uh, and I don't think that you're going to see this happen again. So um I want to know what happened with the busboy and the waitress. Well, the uh, the Mr. bus Weiss? boy the bus boy was asked for a glass of Chardonnay, who relayed the message to our cocktail waitress, whom brought the glass of Chardonnay and put it on the table when the decoy was on her cell phone. Uh, once again, like this gentleman said, there's no excuses. We uh, served a minor without proper identification. Uh, both the, uh, at that point, a uh, officer came in and spoke with me, the bus person, and the cocktail waitress. They both were uh, cited 
and I believe uh, paid a fine and have already uh, completed their uh, what they had to go through. So They're still employed with you, both of them? They both are. We've been open since uh, June 4th, and they've both been fabulous associates for us. Uh, the way we discipline our associates is written warnings. They've both been written up, and uh, on their documentation, it, it does uh, say that if it happens again, they will be terminated. You told me earlier about Yeah. Uh, the cocktail wages, I've kind of used them to share the story with the rest of associates. We have pre-shift meetings every day, and certainly we went through a long stretch there where we used her and him to kind of hopefully teach our other associates how easy it could be or you know what they went through and the fines that they had to pay, so kind of as a deterrence. Did they, uh, did she have to pay the, the fine themselves personally or yeah. the, restu yeah. the restaurant did pay? I didn't think it was in our place. I knew right. that no. we were, Should be we the were here and, uh, the you know, in, in our okay. own circumstances. You did hear that the other restaurants that appeared tonight terminated their people on the spot, that did it? I did hear. Uh, Except for the one that was a 20 year employee that they were doing the renovations at the hotel, but everybody else said that. So why isn't that your rule? Um, I've never gone through this before. Uh, I, you know, I try to treat everyone fairly and didn't think, uh, you know, as they've been trained, uh, didn't think it was the case. We, uh, we work in a culture in our restaurant where I believe that both of those associates had put a lot of deposits into the culture bank, if you will, and uh, didn't think that uh, one infraction over eight months was uh, a call to terminate them both. Okay, uh, Councilman Kerwin. Welcome to Troy. I mean, we do have a culture where there's no toleration for this at all. Sure. So although Cameron Mitchell does operate wonderful restaurants in wonderful place, this is Troy. Sure. We've had tragic losses in Troy, which were a result of alcohol, uh, served in excess. We have a very high standard here regarding serving to minors. Uh, despite it being uh, December 30th, as it was busy all the time, I can't tell you how many times we've heard in our hearings, oh, the bus boy said to the server, she ordered this. It's classic. It's a way to slip through. Sure. The carding immediately just avoids that. No, mm -hmm. you know, without a card, the waitress or whomever. So that standard is one I would really uh, encourage you to take back to your staff. It matters here. It matters in this community. And to lose a license or to face strict fines. Sure. Okay. It matters a lot to me, too. Thank you. Okay. Further questions from Council? Okay. Uh, Councilman Eisenbacher? Have you ever considered putting your own decoy pro program in place for self checking? No, but after this meeting, I uh, would strongly concern, you know, consider it. We have one of our managers is a TIPS certified trainer, and, you know, I think. Uh, we passed on October 2nd and we tip certified uh, to renew them, you know, 22 of our associates a few days after our passing. And I, you know, before December 30th, I would have said our record speaks for itself. And I think that that, you know, us continually training our associates with no infractions, um, I'm kind of proud of. But, uh, you know, this, we don't want this to happen. We've uh, opened in Troy on June 4th. Love the community. The community has really embraced us. We want to be here for 50 years and um, embarrassed as well. Won't happen again. Well, we were, we were glad to have the restaurant come to Troy, but we're also uh, very particular about all of our restaurants, whether they're large or small, long-term like Alibi Restaurant uh, or new restaurants that they, that they follow the rules. and. Um, so uh, we've heard the resolutions that we've done with other people, and probably do the same this time with you folks. Um, however, if you come back next year, I can guarantee it won't be the same result. And uh, we've been very hard on some restaurants here in town who, who uh, had a record that didn't hold up, and sure. they know it. Um, it's just too important um, for the young people in our community and for for all of us and you see the news like I do and there's other kinds of uh, things that are happening out there with young people too and then you add alcohol onto that um, it can be a serious situation and you know because the Somerset area is very popular with people from all over the area you know mm -hmm. but when they come to Troy they should know that 
they're going to have to follow the rules. They're not going to get away with it. So, anybody else? Much as we don't like having to do those Certainly. things as part of our responsibility Certainly. here, so we do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carlin, that's your third one tonight. That's it. You got to talk to all your clients and tell them shape up. <laughs> okay, uh, any, any others? Mrs. Lancaster, anything else you want to add? Okay, thank you. Okay, Mrs. Uh, Councilman Beltramini, you want to do the resolution? Oh, I guess I do. Um, <laughs> I'm spreading it around. Mr. Weiss shall be treated like everyone else tonight, and therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Troy that after due notice, appropriate hearing and deliberations, and having made findings, it is recommended to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission that Class C Resort License Number 169707-2008 SDM in the name of Cameron Mitchell Restaurants LLC in the City of Troy be renewed with the stipulation that all employees um, be TIPS or TAMS trained and that the licensee provide proof of training to the Troy Police Department within 90 days and a certified copy of this resolution be sent to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. Support. Moved by Councilman Beltamini, seconded by Councilman Eisenbach for the approved resolution as printed and read. Discussion? Madam Mayor? Yes. I, I think it's are. particularly important in this case. I, I didn't stutter when I said all employees, and that's what I meant. Right. Um, a busboy shouldn't be serving food, but obviously they do. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's important that all employees, not just front of the house employees, be tips and tam or, or tam string. Okay, Ms. Plata? Council Member Eisenbacher? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. And Council Member Beltramini? Yes. Motion passes. And American Legion, I think that's a different matter, isn't it? Or is it the same? Um, the last item on the agenda is the Charles Edward American Legion Post 14 at 1340 West Maple Road. Your Honor, uh, Your Honor, uh, Honorable Mayor, um, this is a little different and this is yes. not a liquor violation. This is right. a gambling violation. Right. And that gambling violation uh, was discovered on, um, <coughs> oops, okay, the wrong date. September through May of 08. <coughs> Excuse me, Your Honor. You need uh, a drink here. No, I, I'm fine. <laughs> um, there is a stipulation. They're not denying that this violation occurred. The violation was for the use of gambling ver via video machines and receiving payoffs. Two individuals were prosecuted for that charge, a two year misdemeanor, and I pled guilty to it. And uh, Clifford Mann, who is from the American Legion, who wishes to speak to council. <coughs> if council has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Any questions for Mrs. Lancaster? Okay, yes. Council people, Madam Mayor. Yes. Give us your name again. Clifford E. Mann. Yes. I'm the okay. elected commander of Birmingham Troy Post 14. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. I don't know what you want me to say, except that I know what we did was wrong. Since May 30th, when it happened, there has been no violations of any kind anywhere. We have uh, removed all the machines. We're no longer doing business with the individual that we were leasing the machines from, which when we were inundated by the police officers that uh, they were definitely after the individual that was with the machines, I guess something is going on beyond our control. But what we were doing was wrong, and yes, we did do it. We no longer do business with that individual. What made you think in the first place that you could put the machines in there? The machines by themselves are not illegal. What was, what was being paid out was in place long before this individual got there. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make it right. 
okay? The, we paid to the city of Troy through our amusement license. They knew how many machines we had because right. we always paid for them. The paying out was what we did wrong. Why we did it, I have no idea. I wish we hadn't because it has cost us much, much money and our members still do come in, but the visiting members from other posts and VFWs, et cetera, whatever, uh, they don't come in anymore. They don't come in because you don't? We don't have the machines and we'll never have the machines in there again. Do they have that in, in other um, American machine posts? In mm -hmm. other posts, yes, they have them. What they do with them, I have no idea because I don't partake any longer. And uh, you said that the people involved with it are no longer around at all, correct? The vendors with the machines, yes ma'am. They were, they're uh, no longer employed by us or we're not associated with them. Okay. Anybody else have questions? Uh, Councilman Beltrini, then Councilman Eisenbacher. Mr. Mann, yes, how long have you been a member of this post? Uh, next month it'll be four years. Four years? Okay, thank you. And Councilman Eisenbacher? One thing we should, should clarify, the betting wasn't going on in the machine. It was people looking at the machine and making payoffs based on, based on the readouts, correct? That's correct. Okay. The machines by themselves are not illegal. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you, sir. The only other thing that I can add is that since all this has gone down, we have done nothing but comply we worked with the police department and the outside agencies, law enforcement, and with the city of Troy police officers. And we've already been to the LCC. We paid those fines, the attorney fees, et cetera, for the people that were charged. And ever since then, we've been trying to be like Snow White, Adam Mayor. Do it better and cleaner than everyone else. Well, your record here is no violations, no violations, you know, on the liquor inspection, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, is this resolution? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <coughs> I'm confused about the resolution when it's a gambling violation. Yes, Mrs. Bloom? Uh, Mayor, because they are an on-premises licensee, right. you do have the authority when there is a violation of the liquor laws to object to the automatic renewal of their okay. license. So that's why it is provided. Now the TIPS and the TAMS train and TIPS or TAMS training is uh, something that we normally provide in the other resolutions. This is not a sale to a minor, so council may choose to uh, not require the TIPS or TAMS training, but they still are a liquor licensee, so if council feels that it is appropriate, it also would be an appropriate condition to place on them. Okay, thank you. Councilman Beltman? Listening to Mr. Mann talk and knowing that there, this isn't the first gambling violation for this VFW post, I, I'm asking the city attorney or Sergeant Cantlin, is there some other form of education on what is allowable with that kind of a license that maybe these folks should be encouraged to learn? Rather than having their servers trained, maybe their officers need to have some renewal of the familiarity with the law that governs them. Mrs. Blum? Uh, yes, I, I do know that the MLCC certainly is very well versed in, in what is allowed and there are booklets, but TIPS uh, or TAMS should really cover some of these. The primary focus is really the, service. the service to minors, but um, all of the liquor rules um, are at least peripherally explained uh, in this and, and certainly um, we have several resources, and I know Ms. Kaminsky is, is uh, here as well, and I'm sure that she would also offer the services of the coalition and uh, would encourage that as well. Dr. Catlin, you want to add anything about what you think should occur as far as training with these folks? Well, I think as Mr. Mann stated, they knew going in what they were doing was wrong, as opposed to our right. civil minors, where they
have a training involving gambling uh, violations and Mr. Manage stated they have taken the machines out. So the potential for that is is no longer there as well. And the police department will continue to check because they'll go for a liquor violation. Yes, they'll uh, continue with the compliance test as yes. well. And every year they have to reapply for a new license for any games that they do. And they do have other games as a pool table and a shuffle. Councilman Kerwin? I'm just been wondering about the merits of TIPS and or TAM's training in this case. They haven't had a liquor violation since 88. That's not why you were uh, called in on this uh, uh, violation. I think the violation in 1988, there was a gambling device on the press. Correct. And the other violation in 86 was a sale to a non-member. Right. And because it's a club right. license, Correct. no license to sell to. I, I guess I'm asking for your advice then on the inclusion of TIPS or TAMS training in this case. It, it, it would seem to me that that would not be very productive for you to have a, an established record of passing the compliance test for, for many, many years and to ask them to have their people trained in something that they demonstrate that they're fairly proficient in. I'm not sure that can accomplish what we're going to do. I would, I, I would agree, and I would offer resolution <coughs> um, in that vein after questions. I think that was goes to what uh, Councilman Beltrini was saying. Uh, mm -hmm. Would there be something we want to insert separate here? But Sergeant Kent indicated that um, he felt that they've already <coughs> had their instruction about it, and then they'll be, you know, checking all the time. So I think that the resolution probably just that be renewed. So yes. Do you have another question, or you want to yes. do the resolution, Con uh, uh, Councilman Eisenbacher? Um, were the video, were the machine, the gambling machines, video based? Yes, sir. They were. They were. Okay. May I make one point? Please, yes, certainly. Please come, come to the forward, microphone. Uh, I understand. Uh, wait, wait till you get to the mic because we won't be able to. Thank you. Uh, in our American Legion post, there's a Legion, there's auxiliary. And there's uh, what they call the SAL, Sons of the American Legion. Yes. We have an, a, an executive board. These are the people elected from all three factions. And it has been agreed that there won't be poker machines in there again. And everything that we do, we do it better and cleaner than <coughs> everybody else. We're trying to clean up what we did. Yes, we made a terrible mistake. But what we do for the community, even with the financial burden that has been put on us since last May, even this past Thanksgiving and Christmas, we still help needy families and we help needy veterans and we continue to support our veterans that are in the service. I'm one of them that has a son in the service, but uh, that's a different issue. Yes. But we continue to do, we know what we did wrong. <laughs> I don't know for sure what other people do, but just because they do it didn't mean we had to do it. I wish we had. Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, do you want to do a resolution, no. Councilman Kerwin? You ready? Anything? Uh, is there anything more? Okay. Yes. Okay. No. Go ahead, <coughs> Councilman Kerwin. Actually, I'm going to read this one. All right. Whereas the City Council of the City of Troy has reviewed the following infractions of liquor control codes and regulations and or ordinances of the State of Michigan and or the City of Troy respectively. Whereas the City Council has given public notice that it will deliberate and determine whether to adopt a resolution to recommend to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission that the license be revoked after public hearing on Wednesday, February 18, 2009 for the following license establishment. American Legion, Charles Edward Post 14, 1340 West Maple Road, 48084 club in parentheses 20523-2008 in parentheses and have found violation of the following codes and or regulations dated July 1st 2008 gambling violation CIU whereas this licensee had prior violations dated February 4th 1988 MLCC gambling gambling devices on premises 
April 25, 1986, MLCC, sale to non-member, and whereas, after due notice, the licensee was given opportunity to review these cited infractions and opportunity to confront witnesses and or statements by accusers while in the presence of this city council sitting as a hearing body on Wednesday, February 18, 2009. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council of the city of Troy that after due notice, appropriate hearing and deliberations and having made findings, it is recommended to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission that club license number 20523-2008 in the name of American Legion, Charles Edward Post 14, in the city of Troy, be renewed. Second. Moved by Councilwoman Kerwin, seconded by Councilman Fleming, that we approve the resolution as read. Um, discussion on the motion? The vote, Mrs. Blana? Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Broomfield? Yes. And I said Becker? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, that's the last one that is here. Do we have any other? Uh, we've got to have our resolution to go into public comment. Yeah, public there, comment. there needs to be public comment, Mayor, and yes. we did pass. Does anyone that wishes to make a public comment at this time? Okay. Seeing none, then uh, could we have the? Yeah, and we also have the absent member. Yes. Uh, uh, we need a motion to excuse uh, Representative Hollenack, and then we need your other motion. So, Councilman Eisbacher. I would like to make one comment. Um, I do want to thank all the establishments in Troy, uh, the dozens, if not hundreds, hundreds. of uh, liquor licensees that did not sell to minors or overserve or any other violations that would force them to appear before us this evening. And I would like to excuse Councilman Howerlach from this meeting because he is out of the county. You're doing a motion to excuse? Yes. Uh, do we have a second? A second. Moved by Councilman Eisenbacher, second by Councilman Fleming, that we excuse Mayor Patem Howerlach for being out of the county. Uh, Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Plata? Councilmember Kerwin? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Broomfield? Yes. Eisenbacher? Yes. And Fleming? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. And now our other business item. Who has the resolution? Don't we have to have a resolution for closed session? I, it was, uh, yeah, there wasn't one on the table. I saw it, but I didn't bring it with me. Go ahead, Councilman okay. Fleming. Resolved that the Troy City Council shall meet in closed session at the request of City Manager Philip L. Nelson for the purpose of conducting his performance evaluation as permitted by MCL 15.268A. Do we have a second? second? Do we have a second? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. <laughs> Moved by. Councilman Fleming, seconded by Councilman Beltramini, that we approve the resolution as read. Discussion? Mayor. Mm -hmm. Councilman Eisbacher? Mm -hmm. I know that my colleagues won't want to hear this, but I do have concerns about us having this meeting <coughs> when we aren't a complete body. Um, personally, the reason that I had concerns to have this was because of the, the items that Councilman Howerlack brought up in the last meeting without him being present. Um, I don't have any frame of reference from what he said to carry into this meeting. I think it's important that this council uh, be afforded the uh, ability to have a uh, closed session on this matter. <coughs> Regardless if someone isn't here or not, I think it's very crucial. Okay. Yeah. Council on Kerman? One of the reasons we chose to go in tonight was on the assurance that Mayor Pro Tem Howerlick would be here. We've already changed mm -hmm. all of the liquor ha hearings to back up behind um, a full council meeting to accommodate. I really think that the commitment of us to come tonight, including Council Member Broomfield, who has a job that requires her to not only work and then hurry over here compels us 
to honor what we said we were going to do. I will um, be voting yes to go into closed session. Further discussion? Councilman Fleming? Madam Mayor, I moved the resolution just to get it on the table for discussion, you know. But I have a concern, too, that Councilman Howard is, is not here. And basically, I think we set this meeting because of comments that he made at our last meeting that we needed. He didn't want to move forward with accepting a resignation until he had an opportunity to have a performance review. He requested that, and we as a council went on with it, but I think he was the one that was leading that effort in, to have this review. And he, apparently he's privileged to some information that I'm not, that he wanted to have this, so insisted that he, we have this performance review. And I think without him it would be doing a, a disservice because apparently he's, he's privileged to something that I'm not privileged to. He's had separate meetings. Uh, that, that's <clears throat> not my view of this at mm -hmm. all. A request came from Mr. Nelson for a performance review, and I think that it's um, incumbent upon us to have a discussion. Mm -hmm. I think it's unfortunate that uh, due to a job commitment that uh, Councilman Harlack was suddenly called away, uh, but I do think it very important. and. Um, he can be updated. I mean, it could be any of us that are missing. And if I were missing from it, and yet you had set this meeting, I'd say, go ahead, I'll get an update. Um, I just, I think it's very important. Mayor. Councilman Eisenbacher. I'd like to make a resolution to table action on this item until the meeting of March, what was it? Second. March 2nd. Okay, where's the price? I know it's a long meeting. No, no, no. Pardon? Is anyone second? No. No. Okay. Or, no. I don't know why I support it. Yes. Oh, well, let, let me get it on the record. Moved by Councilman Eisenbacher, seconded by Councilwoman Broomfield, that we uh, table this meeting till March 2nd. Discussion? Councilwoman Broomfield? Thank you. And I appreciate uh, Councilwoman Kerwin's comments. Yes, I did cut my class short and I raced over here. You know, I'm as frustrated. I thought we were going to have the meeting this evening. And, and I think we're all up here and we're all frustrated. There's, it, it, it's obvious. I want him to be part of the meeting because of the comments that were made the other night. I think he needs to weigh in. I think he needs to be in the meeting. Regardless of the frustration, regardless of the inconvenience, it, this, is, this is just important. And, I, and, and putting frustration aside, he needs to be one of the seven, and he needs to weigh in. And you know, I, I, I know that sometimes I make decisions based on my emotions because I'm frustrated or upset about something. I don't want to do it here. I want all seven of us to, to meet with our city manager. He's willing. I want to hear the, the eight of us talk, not the seven of us. And that's why I second it. Uh, but my, my concern is that being that this is several meetings in a row where Councilman Harlack suddenly has work obligations, we don't know that for March 2nd he can be here. So I, was, no, you know, we don't. We, we don't know. I, I know that it's a regular business meeting of council, and you know he's you, you set those meetings like maybe with his with his schedule with his work. He says I can't make any of these Monday night meetings because he gives them the notice. I'm not. I can't speak for him, but what I what I don't want to do is go into session with one less person. Whoever it is. Council if it was Bill? you, I would be saying the same thing. Councilwoman Bill Tremaine? I agree with Councilwoman Broomfield, but I have a legal question for the attorney. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why does he speak? March 2nd follows February 27th. Right. <laughs> and so, I, uh, Councilman, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Powerlock made several mm -hmm. comments Monday night that caused the city manager to say 
I'd like to talk to you all about my employment, and can we have a closed session to do that? We said we needed to do that at the earliest opportunity because we wanted to do it before the 27th of February. This is that time. And so now, quite honestly, the city attorney needs to tell us what our options are, and the city manager can weigh in as well. I mean, that's absolutely appropriate. Uh, Council Kerwin, you want to speak before we call? I, I do. Uh, just a point of order <clears throat> from the motion that's that's before us, which I believe was tabling. Did you? Yeah. Did you I misunderstand? Well, I need to know whether it's postponed or tabling. Yes, I thought I said table postpone. Table. Mrs. Plata? You said what? It would be more correct to postpone it. Postpone. Well, I need to know whether that, because discussion is inappropriate if that's what's been going on. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't use the right language either way. I said table, Did you mean postpone? table until, which is postponed. I haven't read my Robert's rules in quite a while. Okay, because tabling actually limits discussion. So if, if we can mm. still have discussion, let me just, rem just remind us that some of us sitting at the table as recently as Monday night said, this needs to be resolved this week. Yes. We need to get in there mm -hmm. this week. We are on a time crunch. We need to get in there. Would it be possible that when uh, Mayor Pro Tem Howerlet comes back that there might be a continuation or something else? Of course. But we need to still go about doing our business, whether we're all here or not here. That's just the way it is. Ms. Bloom? Yes. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Mrs. Beltrini, because that is something that I would have necessarily brought up. Um, we do have a, an effective date of resignation, um, as, uh, which is prior to our, our next meeting. So um, Council, again, can uh, you know, have the closed session tonight. That is an option that you do have. It takes a majority vote uh, because it's under subsection A, um, or Another option that you could have is to um, enforce the 30-day to, to force the 30-day notice uh, provisions, which would require um, so you could accept the resignation effective as of Sunday, March 15th, 2009, which again would be uh, you could certainly reconsider that if. Uh, that is the direction that council chooses to take after having the personnel evaluation. Mr. Nelson? Uh, I would offer either to extend uh, the proposed date for resignation to a, a date certain or to rescind the letter, whichever would be suitable to the council. I do feel that the entire council needs to be present uh, to discuss this. I, I think this is a decision that affects both of us and it affects the city as well. Thank you. And I would uh, just as soon wait until the entire council is available uh, to discuss this. Madam Mayor. I, Councilman Kerwin? Is that you? Yes, it is. Uh, but we have a resolution before us and this is, this is new input. I would think to, uh, as, as the city attorney mentions, we could extend the deadline and so on, but that hasn't been posted. I think probably the cleanest way to do this at this point might be um, a suggestion that the manager mentioned, which is simply to rescind the letter as of, as of now. Uh, he can do that. It wouldn't take a motion from us. It, as I said, it hasn't been posted. And we could go into a uh, closed session for personnel evaluation when all are uh, available. That looks like the best that we can do. Is that correct? We can do that. We can do that with his letter. Yes, letter. certainly. Okay. If the manager is willing to rescind his letter, then council uh, doesn't necessarily okay. need to take any action. Right. Because my my concern is if we count on talking on the second, and then we have somebody gone again, here we go. We'll have to put it off again. So um, I'm expressing my displeasure. Mm -hmm. uh, this evening at the situation. Uh, I think it puts us all in an awkward position and puts the city in an awkward position. Uh, I realize that um, that's where we are. This, the motion is on the, for um, postponement of Mayor. the session until March 2nd. Discussion, Councilwoman Brookfield. 
Um, whether that's clean way or not, I'm not so sure. I'm not so, I'm not <coughs> comfortable with um, our city manager rescinding the letter. And I'll tell you why, because I think we need to go into closed session and talk about the reasons why the letter was put forth. And then we'll come out of that with whatever develops. So for me, I'm much more comfortable with just moving it for the 30 days, which is mid-month. Um, by rescinding, what's the point of the closed session? A review. Personnel review. We've personnel done a personnel review. review. But, but it's, it's possible to do more than than one. Well, I can't control what the city manager is going to do. That was his choice. Right. But but part of the, the closed session is that's going to come up. That's the, the reasons behind that. Okay, so sure. if it's rescinded, then you're not talking about it. Well, the other option is, uh, Councilman Brumfeld, that we go into closed session tonight. We hear that. No, there's more options. I the, know. The city attorney offered more options. One of just uh, enforcing the 30 days. Okay, further discussion on the postponement? This is the postponement of our exec session. Okay, Mrs. Pilata, the vote? Mayor Schilling? No. Councilmember Baccherini? No. Councilmember Broomfield? Yes. Eisenbacher? No. Fleming? Yes. And you're in Kerwin? No. Motion fails. Um, our motion on the floor is to uh, have an exact session. Mayor? Councilman Eisenbacher? I agree with Councilwoman Broomfield that the other alternative put forth by our city attorney is the, the appropriate one. Um, the question is, is what is the effective way to accomplish that? Um, because the order of events are important, I believe. I could get the city attorney to answer how we should most effectively move to that solution as so that we can have all seven people present. Mrs. Plum? Uh, Mayor, I, I can tell you a couple of steps that need to be taken. Um, the, the first thing is that uh, you do need to deal with the resignation. If you're going to enforce the 30 days, then that should probably be your first order of business. So you should um, accept the resignation as of the 30-day limit. The resolution that we previously provided to Council was as of Sunday, March 15, 2009 at midnight. Okay. Uh, that would be the, the 15 days. As far as um, providing for the <coughs> personnel evaluation um, that can be on the next agenda as an item assuming that the city manager still wishes to um, have an evaluation held in a closed session that can be an item just placed on that next agenda um, and again council could reconsider um, a decision again assuming that the city manager was willing to have it reconsidered so, Councilman Kerwin? Of course, that wasn't posted for tonight's meeting. Action on that letter was not posted for tonight's meeting. Correct. Action, in fact, can't take place. The only, the only thing that was posted was going to exact session. <coughs> Mayor, it, yes. it is a regular meeting. And because oh. it is a regular meeting, although we try and keep to all of the items that are properly um, put in the agenda and we want everyone to have as much notice as possible, um, 
you technically do have the ability as a regular meeting to do that. I guess I'm not comfortable with that at all. This was sent out as regardless of how that spun, it says City Council of the City of Troy liquor violation hearings. I'm uncomfortable. <coughs> I don't think that honors that. Madam Mayor. Council of Beltman. I have a larger problem. If we're going to accept the city manager's resignation, by whatever date, why does he want to spend time and why do we want to spend time with an evaluation at this point? I mean, what kind of a signal does that send to our staff, to our public, to the city manager? You either want to have an evaluation to build a better team, or you want to say, fine, there's the door on this date. Which signal do you want to send? I just think that it's so crucial that we have a conversation. We're supposed to be working together as a group. I think it's unfortunate that one of our members couldn't be here this evening, but that should not deprive the rest of us from having the conversation. I think it would be beneficial in the long run to have a conversation. I and if we have to have several conversations, we can do that. We can have one tonight, and then we can have another one when we can have all seven members possible. Uh, present. I, I just think it's, um, it behooves us to uh, do this. After all the years and time that we have spent in service to this community. Mayor, don't take yes. it down that road. No. Listen, oh, yeah. I, ha I want to meet with the seven, including Councilman Howerlack, because of the comments he said at the last meeting, and I want to go into closed session with an evaluation hearing him out, hearing if, if some things have, you know, that there's some issues, that there, there's some things that have changed, and I think we all know that. We all know that. And we need to have a full session or a full council with our city manager. Madam Mayor. Uh, Councilman Kerwin? Oh, oh, excuse me. Uh, Mrs. Bloom? Another option that you do have is to call a special meeting between now and the effective date of the resi uh, resignation. Who's going to be here? The, the problem, Mr. Bloom, with doing it, that is that I could call a special meeting and we could not have seven members present because we don't know everybody's schedule. Um, I just can't fathom a reason why we can't have a conversation tonight and then we can have another closed session on the second when everybody's here. I just think it would be beneficial and that was what my suggestion <coughs> is. I'm all for doing what's best for the, um, the situation. I, I, and Councilwoman I, Kerman? I agree. I don't know how communication together well I guess this, that's the statement is that we are having trouble even wanting to have a dialogue together. But I think that we would all benefit from having that dialogue. It may not be long, but I do recommend. Now, I still believe there's a motion on the floor. There was the motion to postpone. We still have a standing motion uh, from Mr. Flem uh, Council Member Fleming on the floor. I believe we should go into closed session. Mayor. Uh, Councilman Eisenbacher. I have a question for either the parliamentarian or for our city attorney. What happens if we adjourn the meeting without taking action on this item? Would it carry over? Oh, we still. No, we can't. No. The next time we would be meeting open. Is the could it be open until a special session is called? If you are going to uh, go the route of setting a special meeting, then that would be very specific. It would be limited to the items that are on the agenda. And I'm assuming that the only item on the agenda would be to go into a closed session, again, provided that Mr. Nelson requests that an evaluation occur in a closed session. I would like to request a break so we could try and contact Councilman Howerlack and check our schedules and try and set a time as soon as possible, as soon as he's back in town. We can just sit here, take a break, call him, find out. 
try and work it out. Uh, the the See point. If he's available. Yeah. See if he's, speaker tonight. If he's available tonight, that'd be fine by speaker. <clears throat> you have the speaker facility. Mm -hmm. Let's let's try closed session. Pardon? I call call the motion. Call, you want to call for the question? I do want to call for the question. Okay, the motion's been. The question's been called, Mrs. Bloom. I, uh, Mrs. Uh, Plata. Can you repeat the? We've talked a lot. The <coughs> motion is to uh, go into closed session for the uh, purposes stated. We'll wait for the call. Mrs. Plata. Councilmember Beltramini. I'm thinking. Thank you. Hello, Councilman Harlock. Are you available by conference call to join us in a closed session this evening? I'm trying to decide whether or not to go into closed session. If you're available by telephone, you're likely to do so. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. He is available briefly, but he'd prefer to have the, just the resignation date changed on the letter. Yes. Councilmember Broomfield? No. Eisenbacher? No. Fleming? No. Powerlad? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kerwin? Yes. And Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion fails. The motion fails because it's a tie. Tie. Mayor? Councilman Eismacher? I would like to very respectfully request of our city manager to change the date on your letter to match the 30 day. I will do so. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Do we need a resolution on that, Mr. Plum? Well, there's only one person requesting it. I wanted to come from a resolution. Maybe some of us want to vote no. It, it, Mr. Plum? At this time, Mayor, there is no action out there. Um, that is occurring prior to it, I'm sure that we can do a letter, maybe even instantaneously, um, that could be sufficient, although it's also appropriate to do a motion. Oh. Councilwoman Broom, uh, Beltramini. This was a personal request by David. <clears throat> To yes. fill, and I think that that <coughs> is the most appropriate place for it. I think so. I unless again, what signal do you want to send? Do you want to say there's the door, or do you want to say we're willing to evaluate you and try and build a team? And if you do a resolution, you're not sending yes. the signal that you're going to try and build a team. Right. Thank you. Part of trying to move forward. This isn't appropriate. Really, we don't need a resolution. Mayor. Uh, Councilman Broomfield. I appreciate the city manager moving this up. This is his choice. It was his choice to submit the resignation. It's his choice to move it up. And I want to emphasize again why I was not comfortable with rescinding it, and this is why. 
ta we're talking about building a team, going into closed session. I'm talking about going into closed session and talking about a resignation. If the resignation is not on the table, you can't very well talk about it, Councilwoman Belchimini. It is about going in and talking. This is per the resignation has perpetuated this meeting. The closed session wouldn't be taking place. We wouldn't be doing an evaluation. We wouldn't be uh, sitting here arguing if there wasn't a resignation. The resignation stands. I appreciate him moving it forward as a logistic matter. And we're going in to do it an evaluation because there was an, a, a, a um, resignation. If the resignation is rescinded, there's no reason to have a closed session. Uh, but one of the things that this council needs to do when we have this matter resolved is to set a date, a time, and a place for us to have a uh, retreat session, a, a discussion on um, many topics, and I would recommend that all council members uh, think about that uh, because I think we have some major problems to solve. Any other items to come before us tonight? Mr. Bloom? Just, Mayor, I just want to make sure that it's very clear that uh, if, if there is a closed session in the future, that it will be limited to the personnel evaluation. Correct. And that yes. no decisions will be made. I just think it's very important to state that. That's under the Open Meetings Act, and Council is certainly not going to be violating the Open Meetings Act. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. Mayor? Yes, Council. Mm -hmm. uh, question for our City Attorney. If we want to have a closed session, since the, the resignation is standing, it's just been moving out, moved out. Do, can we set a uh, put forward a resolution tonight, for instance, to have a closed session on the agenda for March second? It would be requested. It would so have to be requested. Just yeah, that. that'll come forward. It'll come forward with request, and then it'll be with the agenda. Okay. All right. So, so that so we'll just kind of like what we did tonight will be on the agenda. We'll vote on it March second to go into closed session over all of this. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Any other items? We stand in adjournment.